Hello guys and welcome to another Profile Tree video. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the web application development. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So before you actually get into the development of a website, you want to have a web application idea. So this just means what are you planning to achieve with this website? Who will be your audience? Are you planning to run a current business and just turning to a website? Are you thinking of opening up a brand new business as an e-commerce platform? Or are you simply just going to have a blog post type website or any other similar based web application idea as a non e-commerce website? So with this stage, there's a lot to think about before you even do the market research. So what exactly is market research? So market research on web development involves gathering and analyzing data to gain insights into the web development industries, current trends, demand, competition, and future prospects. Now, in doing so, it helps businesses, developers, and stakeholders make informed decisions and identify opportunities in the market. So there's a couple of key areas when you're doing some market research. You wanna have an industry overview. So once you finish your web, web application idea, you wanna have an understanding on the current state of the web development industry, uh, its size and growth rate. Now, this includes analyzing market reports, industry publications, and industry specific websites. Next one is your web development services and technologies. And uh, you want to identify which would be the most suitable software to use in terms of programming languages, frameworks, and tools that developers and businesses are currently using. Next would be your market segmentation. And uh, that's analyzing the market based on different segments. That will be your front end development, that will be your back end development, full stack development mobile web development and web application development for specific industries that would be for e-commerce and healthcare finance or any non-e-commerce as well then you want to analyze your competitor so depending if there's multiple uh, competitors that are similar onto your site make sure you study the web development space uh, like the agencies, the freelancers, software companies, understand what they have to offer as a business, what sort of pricing strategies they have in place, the target markets and strengths, uh, and of course, its weaknesses. Then you want to take a look at the customer behavior and preferences. So that involves conducting surveys and interviews with potential customers and existing clients. You want to gather information on their needs, their preferences, and their satisfaction levels with web development services. Then you want to see what sort of demand there is in that industry and job market. So analyze the demand for web developers and web development services in different regions and industries. Now, of course, you will have people working from office and working from home. So depending how big you want to go with this uh, business of yours with the web application idea, then uh, that's when you need to start thinking about demand and the job market. And of course, the emerging technologies and trends. You want to think ahead. So make sure you identify emerging web technologies such as progressive web apps, uh, serverless architectures, and the adoption of new programming languages and frameworks. And then lastly, uh, you want to maybe take a look into the uh, responsiveness of web development and web hosting. So firstly, we'll discuss the mobile and responsive web development. So that's basically understanding the growing importance of mobile friendly and responsive web development in response to the increasing use of mobile devices for web browsing. Then your web hosting, that's when you sort of have to decide uh, what sort of market there is for web hosting services and cloud platforms that's used for web application development. But we'll talk uh, on that later on in the video.
So getting into the more complex side of the actual website, which is functionality. So that refers to a set of features, capabilities, and interactive elements that enable users to perform specific actions and achieve their intended goals while using the website. So we'll use our website as an example, which is profile tree. And we'll start off with navigation. So if you have an intuitive and well-structured navigation system, this means that the user We'll be able to move between different pages and sections of the website easily so i'll go ahead and demonstrate that now so this is our navigation slash header so if i click on profile tree you can see that it goes back into the actual home page or landing page we have a menu bar here where we can see a list of the different options that i can click on for the website so web design agency uh, and of course that's under website that's on the website services You've got parts for digital marketing services and content marketing services. We could also see what services we have to offer. So web design and development, digital marketing services and content marketing services. And there's even parts where we can link back. So let's just say we wanted to go to portfolio. We can do so. And we can change our categories. So things like that. that that's what navigation is all about. Now. Our next one would be a search functionality. So this means a search bar that enables users to find a specific piece of content or products quickly. So if I wanted to go ahead and click blog and search up blog, you can see that there are related services to that. So our expert business blog offers a world of digital how to. So instantly this website has recognized that I was searching up, searching up for blog. So whatever, has the wording blog or something similar to blog you can see that it refers me to that specific area so we can see a bunch and list of different articles uh, on their blog and i could actually have a look at the category uh, placement here blogging and vlogging so there's a couple of the most recent searches so that's what the search functionality is all about then our next one would be the contact form so if we scroll all the way down to footer usually you, you would see an area for contact so of course we have our belfast office there and monaghan office with the different numbers so that's one way of contacting but more what i'm looking for is contact form so you can see on the navigation we've got a contact us and it tells us a little bit more detail about the company uh, so uh, couple more helpful areas to actually find and locate this business so there's uh, the McSweeney Center so that's the address and of course Monaghan one uh, in general we can reply and ask for an email there's the different social media there and of course this is the contact form where I can enter my first name last email a contact number and something that we may want to discuss about the project and of course agree to the terms and conditions and uh, Pretty much just newsletter so that's great for updating the current customers or potential new customers so that's may, something that you may want to consider for your website now something that i'll explain uh with the user and registration and authentication so unfortunately i can't demonstrate it with this website however it would be more towards websites that are purely for blog or e-commerce based websites and this is the ability for users to create accounts, log in and manage their profiles. So with the likes of Facebook, so that, that's uh, a login based website. So that's where they can manage their profiles. Or if you're looking for uh, membership based, then you're looking more. So if we type in like a gym sort of website and we'll see a list of different memberships that are available or it doesn't have to be gym of course there's uh, multiple ones like gaming uh, gaming website where i'm able to pick a membership uh, so that's more based on e-commerce of course so that's where i can log in uh, but yes uh, user registration and authentication so that's one thing that you may want to have to consider when you're building uh, an e-commerce website so for someone who may be struggling with coding and aren't so technical with the front end or back end of coding, of course, uh, you may want to consider using a content management system. So in abbreviation to that, which is CMS. So this is basically 
a backend system that allows website administrators to update and manage website content without need for technical knowledge. So this is an example here. We've got Squarespace and I'll actually search another one up here, which is Wix. So this is a highly, I would highly recommend to use this uh, website builder as well. And of course you have other ones like Shopify. So we'll go ahead and search that up. So that's purely e-commerce based. So you may want to consider doing Shop Shopify. And of course there's areas where you can grab domains, which is GoDaddy. So a list of different available content management systems out there. So back on our website again, we're going to be talking about the responsive design. So what exactly is this? So that just means the website should be optimized for various devices. Uh, that ensures it displays correctly and is user friendly on desktops, tablets and smartphones. So if I were to shrink this website down, uh, what should happen is all my content and all of my placeholders should shrink. So depending on the PX, which is the sizing of the actual image, should the images disappear or should they appear at a smaller uh, size? Uh, what way should I demonstrate? So I'll actually do one. Uh, I'll go into the inspect tool and I'll actually demonstrate it here. So um, we'll go on to the Lighthouse. So this is another one as well, which is the performance, but you don't really have to uh, know about that. Anyway, uh, we can analyze the page load. So you can see here that it's uh, optimized into the mobile version. You can see that it's a smaller screen in terms of the actual uh, screen sizing. So that's pretty much what that looks like. And then just what I've demonstrated there, which is the actual uh, SEO checker or uh, performance based checker. So you want to analyze and check what uh, performance tools you're going to be using for your website. And on top of that as well, you want to look for SEO, which is search engine optimization. So think about the different techniques and features that, that you'll use to improve the website's visibility on search engines. And of course, you may want to think about the language and localization. So depending on where you want to base your website, uh, make sure that you provide content in multiple languages and that means that it adapts to the user's location and language preferences. So there is a lot to consider. There's actually far more things to consider from what I've said. You've got uh, e-commerce functionality, you've got social media integration, multimedia integration, RSS feeds and newsletters, which uh, we could see that's on here, uh, accessibility features, but overall, um, you're looking for the specific functionalities that's required for your website. And of course, it all depends on its purpose, the target audience and the goals it aims to achieve. Now, as I've, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, so it's essential to carefully plan and prioritize the functionalities during the web development process. So that enables us to create a user-friendly and successful website and make sure that you regularly gather user feedback and analyze website analytics uh, that helps you help identify areas for improvement and optimize the website's functionality over time. So moving on to wireframes. Now there's different alternative ways to actually complete a wireframe. So here we have in front of us is a software development tool that is called Figma. Now Figma is a powerful and uh, popular cloud-based design and prototyping tool. And it's used by designers, developers, and teams to create user interfaces. So that's UI and user experiences as well, which is UX. So typically a UI or UX designer would be using this type of development tool. Now it's used for websites, web applications, mobile apps, and other digital products, now, as well as this. Uh, Figma provides a collaborative and efficient platform that allows multiple users to work simultaneously on the same design in real time. And that makes it a valuable tool for remote teams and collaboration. So if we have a look at the application itself, you can see that it is online. Uh, we're able to give some feedback if we want to drop down a message. Now, it is what it is. It's just basically a website design. You can see it right in front of us. So this is a one of the sites that we had been working on, which is Luxury, Leisure and Affluence. Uh, so our initial design at the start was to have uh, either dark mode and light mode on there. So this is what light mode looks like. 
So you can see how it's meant to be structured. We're meant to have blogs, movable text. And you can see here as well, we've got our footer and our we've got our header as well. And then of course you've got the SEO title and stuff. So that's all uh, there in the design. And then you can see that we've structured a couple of different pages as well, like a single post page. So that would more or less be a blog post. And then we've also got the archive. So this is the bookmarking. Uh, well, this will be the bookmarking, sorry. And then of course, this is like a contact form. So there's multiple ways you can use the Figma application. Now, this is more or less the basics of wireframing. So we do actually have a link to build our own, but that's the basic structure of buttons and cards. You've got navigation, hero section, you've got our social proofs, feature left, feature right. So that's more or less what the uh, elements are going to be or the sections are going to be on a website. But I would say that wireframing is, of course, a very, very important stage to web development. And you don't need to actually use the Figma application itself. And you can actually decide to work on it in Sketch. So if you plan to do it on pen and paper, you can do so. All you're really highlighting is the design and structure of a website. So that is what wireframing is all about. So this is our next step to web application development. So now you're going to be choosing the language and that of course depends on various factors and that'll include the project you want to work on, your personal preferences and the requirements of the job market. And of course, the specific goals you want to achieve. Now, there's a couple of steps that you may want to take when deciding on the coding language. So think about your project requirements. Think about what languages that you want to consider. So here in front of us, we've actually got an application developer called Visual Studio Code. And this is where the back end coding and front end coding uh, for the website occurs. Now, for web development, you want to consider languages like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python with uh, web frameworks like the Django or Flask. So that's for Python and then Ruby. So with Ruby on Rails or maybe PHP with frameworks like Laravel or Symfony. Now, once you've got a application downloaded, uh, you will have to add a couple of different plugins as well. So now is the learning curve and experience. So evaluate your current coding experience and familiarity with different languages. If you're not uh, too technical with the skill, as I said, you can go ahead into the likes of a CMS builder like GoDaddy, Wix, Shopify or Squarespace. Uh, so that we seen earlier on and you can go for that sort of beginner friendly step and method or otherwise if you are some, uh, creating something a little bit more complex this is where you turn to coding. Now to get set up is very easy. All you need to do is open up your actual terminal so we'll do that now and then if you're wanting to maybe do something for PHP so you will look on the likes of using Composer. So Composer. And then if, to, if you wanna verify whether you have Composer or not, uh, you just hit enter and then that'll just give you the verification that Composer is there. And you also have your uh, version. And in order to actually get Laravel, all you would need to do is hit Composer. Uh, so this is PHP now. So Composer, and then we're gonna create a project project and then we'll say laravel for slash laravel now this occurs the same for if i can spell laravel there you go uh so this occurs the same for the craft cms as well but just any cs uh php application you know you can just do composer create project laravel laravel and then the actual name of the project name so um, just say this is where you would have your project name so there you go uh, but I'll go ahead and type in web application development 
and just hit enter. You can see that that'll create the project for us. So that'll install Laravel as you can see. Just takes a little minute. And what we could do then is CD into the web application development uh, website or the actual file directory once this has finished downloading. So I'll skip ahead and show you guys what is next. So that's it now successfully completed. And if you want to access the actual directory for the file, all you need to do is CD into your web application development or CD the project name. Then it'll come up users and your username and your project name. And all you need to type in after that is code dot. So we'll go ahead and type that in now. So code space dot. And once we've typed in code space dot, you'll see straight away here that our actual development tool has now opened up. So this is Visual Studio Code or Visual Code, sorry. Now we're able to see that it's PHP. Um, we've got our HTTP there. Uh, we've explained in another video all about controller, controllers and middleware. So check that out in another video. And we've got Composer, Artisan, PHP Unit. So we've got all our packages. Now, if you are looking for extensions or another language application, you, you can go ahead into the extensions and type in Python. So there's Python. That's one of the examples here. And if we're looking to maybe use PHP, like we already have here, there's PHP. And somewhere along the lines of JavaScript, there's JavaScript and of course just Java alone. You can see that there is an available language for Java. So there's Java Run, Java Debugger, so plenty of different options and you're not shorthanded when choosing a language. All you need to do is CD into your web application development or CD the project name. Then it'll come up users and your username and your project name. And all you need to type in after that is code dot. So we'll go ahead and type that in now. So code space dot. And once we've typed in code space dot, you'll see straight away here that our actual development tool has now opened up. So this is Visual Studio Code or Visual Code, sorry. Now we're able to see that it's PHP. Um, we've got our HTTP there. Uh, we've explained in another video all about controller, controllers and middleware. So check that out in another video. And we've got Composer, Artisan, PHP Unit. So we've got all our packages. Now, if you are looking for extensions or another language application, you, you can go ahead into the extensions and type in Python. So there's Python. That's one of the examples here. And if we're looking to maybe use PHP, like we already have here, there's PHP. And somewhere along the lines of JavaScript, there's JavaScript and of course just Java alone. You can see that there is an available language for Java. So there's Java Run, Java Debugger, so plenty of different options and you're not shorthanded when choosing a language. Now the last step is the hosting and of course deploying a website. Now hosting refers to the process of storing all the website files, databases and resources on a web server and deploying means putting those files and resources in a live environment, meaning that users are able to access and interact with the website. Now there's a couple of steps into hosting and deploying a website. First of course is to choose a web hosting provider. So make sure that you select a web hosting provider that offers and features uh, the resources suitable for your website's needs. Maybe you should consider factors like server type, shared, VPS, dedicated, so that's the different uh, types of uh, server types. Uh, think about your storage, your bandwidth, performance, security, and customer support. Now we're using an article here from QuickSprit. Now you can see these are the best web hosting services. We've got Hostinger, DreamHost, SiteGround, Bluehost, Scala Hosting, GreenGeeks, uh, HostGator, WP Engine, A2 Hosting, and InMotion uh, Hosting. Now, as well as that, GoDaddy actually provides web hosting as well. So you may wanna go and select their services. You'll be able to see 
that they do Windows hosting, WordPress hosting, so that they've got a little bit more information about that if you need to take a look at it. So we'll just scroll down and take a look at the different recommendations they have. So this is what it's like. So you can have a managed WordPress Deluxe, so that's $5.99 per annum or per month, sorry, and then uh, Manage WordPress Basic $3.99, Manage WordPress Ultimate $11.99. Now, of course, it's not just that. You could just do uh, e-commerce hosting as well for WordPress. So a couple of options there. Now, as I said, if you're not using WordPress itself, uh, they do offer different options there, like Web Hosting Economy, Web Hosting Deluxe, uh, Web Hosting Ultimate and Maximum. And then your next step would be to register a domain name. So with the likes of us, we are www.profiletree.com and that would be the chosen register domain name for the site. And some web hosting providers will offer a domain registration service as well. So with the likes again with GoDaddy, they do provide a uh, web hosting and of course provide do domain names. Now, if you are creating and building a website on a CMS platform, you will be given the option to choose a domain from there. Or if you already have one, you could just redirect it to that site. So there's a couple of options there as well. Once you've got the web hosting and the domain sorted, all you would need to do now is to prepare your website for deployment. So make sure that the website's fully tested and checked. And the way to do that is to actually go onto the inspect, uh, check the performance, check the... Uh, Lighthouse, generate a report, see how the performance of the website is going, check to see if there's any drops in SEO, check the ranking. Uh, overall, just check and make sure you check everything that could fail on a website. So we see that we're auditing uh, profiletree.com at the minute. And there are other ways to actually check how the website's doing, like Google Analytics. So with our performance, you could see we're at 70. We've got our accessibility at 98. Best practice is at 92 and SEO, which is 100. We've got publisher ads as well. So of course, Chrome extensions, it's been uh, said that it can affect the performance. So that's why we're at 70. You could see that we have a tree map as well of how the uh, website is going. So that's just a tree map of it. And we could view the actual website on mobile as well. So once those stages are done, then of course, that's the deployment ready. Uh, upload website files, make sure you configure your uh, the domain. If you're using your own domain, so as mentioned before, uh, make sure that the IP address is connecting to the right area. If you're using cloud, uh, Cloudflare or if you're using Flywheel, things like that then make sure that your database is all set up properly. Um, so if your website uses a database, uh, an example for this is like for dynamic content or user data, make sure you set up the necessary data databases for uh, the imported data. And then lastly, all you need to do is test the website, make sure once the, the files and databases are uploaded, give it a trial run, see if everything works as a user. Uh, just ensure that the website is working correctly on a live server, check all the pages, forms, make sure there's no dead links, functionalities, and identify any last minute issues. And of course, another thing as well that you may wanna consider if you wanna gain the trust of a user is to actually have a secure website, which is having an SSL certificate. So that just requires a couple of verification. We actually, uh, talked about this in a previous video so you guys may want to check that out and it's to do with website security and lastly what you want to do as well is to back up your site and monitor the performance so i've just demonstrated as well there uh, with the inspect tool you just right click inspect and then you'll be able to open up this option here and then you can go ahead and click on lighthouse and you can also check the security so a couple of options there so it's easy enough to do so there you have it, we've done a full circle on the web application development. So we've discussed the web application idea, market research, the functionality, wireframes and prototypes, uh, choosing your coding language, and of course, hosting and deploying a website. Now, if you guys found the video helpful, please do let us know in the comments section below. But other than that, I'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you very much for watching.